There's our beach. Yay. I hope I'm getting this shot. I am so stoked for this. It is 10.30 in the morning. Uh, I slept in my truck on the road and yeah, we are out at the beach. Parking lot's empty. This is the company that I am rolling with, CKG Scoops. And they also do shafts. This isn't one of their shafts. I just put one on here that I had rigged up and you can see I got a little plastic finger on there so I can drag it behind me and leave my grid marks. And this is a type of conduit, so it's actually basically like the type of aluminum that you would use when welding a bicycle together. It's for special stuff when you don't want to make sparks, but you have to run electrical lines really close to gas. So, happen to have some of that, and it's lighter than a wooden handle. And this is the scoop, so this Already when they sent it to me I was just really ecstatic about it. It is nicely made. Um, you can't see a single seam on this. I mean if they were doing body work I would be stoked. It's uh, it is just well made. There's the close-ups on it. I can give you some beauty shots and a link to their site below and yeah so hopefully Lucky Scoot and then we're using the Garrett Carrot pouch. I have the standard double D coil on my Garrett AT Pro. This is what I usually run with when we're in real dirty areas, which is a now coil. And you can see it's actually not much shorter, but it is skinnier. And uh, we're trying to cover a bunch of space, so this is the largest coil that I have, and I can still pinpoint with it. And this will be going along, but just in the backpack in case we have some sort of nightmare situation. And then running with headphones so we don't bug anybody. And that's the gear that we are bringing with us today. And then on a beach, I have to haul a backpack because you carry everything with you. So that's got the rest of the film equipment, hydration, food, layers of clothing, all that. And we are off. I'll show you the first find. Okay, we are on the pathway leading out and. This is the adjustments that I've made to my settings on this one. I am not going to run in zero. I'm going to run in proportionate audio, audio mode, so pro mode, but on my custom settings, which is basically everything left on, but discriminating iron up to 40. So, because we're at the beach and because it's very mineralized. And right now I have my sensitivity bar down a couple but if I start swinging and I want to keep my coil up off the sand and not have to be so close I might turn it up but for now it's down to there because I'm going to be trying to stay as close as I can and yeah that's what we're at I'll show you the first target it's finally time well I literally just started walking and got an 87 VID number and looks like it's a quarter so it's not a bad start we like finding coins we got our first target. I'm gonna head out on the actual beach. Well, that was a solid hour probably without digging a single signal. But I do like my new setup. I have it set to where I can hold it like that. As I walk along, it drags behind me. That's what the little plastic finger is for. It leaves just the deepest little groove in the sand. So I know where I've been. So I can be most efficient. I'm heading down here because sometimes the waves, it's all sanded in down here, which is good for this beach. It's actually got sand piled against the houses a little bit. And, uh, they lose a lot sometimes. But for us, it means we're either looking for something that randomly got chucked up on top or, or uh, a low spot. So since the tide's still kind of up, we're, we're heading to the north end of the beach, which gets peeled off and eaten away at more than, than the south where you'll find gravels and, and more hope right now. So, that's the update. Uh, we are at a spot. You can see it's got the gravel finally showing up. This is where you, I get some little agates and stuff. And 
that uh, it means that the heavies are here, so the sand has been stripped away enough for them to be present. And then I'm just hunting spots up here where big rocks have been thrown up because they're heavy enough to be uh, coming from where things might have been swept out to and then tossed back up on shore, if that makes sense. But I just want to stop and pause and show you the kind of agates that are laying around out here. Pretty beautiful. And we've got a little seagull. It's a beautiful day, it really is. Here's my last grid. And we're going back up into the dry, just kind of go back and forth. I did this little gravel patch there. It's a long beach. Well, I've been digging on this one for about a half an hour. I, uh, I didn't ever end up finding anything, but I sure made a heck of a hole. We got some weather rolling in on us. It might get a little cloudy here. The town of Bolinas up there. So here we are at the north end of Stinson Beach and we're literally behind us is a bay. It's uh, Bolinas Bay. Bolinas is the little town on the point over here and the sandbar runs down and across it and it's literally just a sandbar and then there's houses on the other side of these dunes built down the strip and this is literally we're sitting on top of where the San Andreas Fault runs through. So. That's a pretty cool fact. And another thing I bet you didn't know is see the city of San Francisco down here? Off in the distance, see all the, the white there's houses and a city? That's the outside of it that faces the Pacific. And then the, San, the Golden Gate Bridge is out of sight, but it's directly, basically through there. And then you have the Pacific out in front of us. If you look way out here, you can see the Farallon Islands. These are actually islands out there. And during the last ice age, when a bunch of the ocean's waters were locked up in the ice caps, the water was about 300 and something feet lower. And the land actually extended out to about where the Farallons are now. And then, of course, the ice melted and the water started rising. And I think that was about 12,000 years ago. And it is to the point where it is now. So they say the San Francisco Bay used to be a dry valley. And they picture, picture that picture. all of the expanse out in front of us, all the way out to those far islands, has been dry land before. And if you know humans, you always cluster close to, to the waterfront, just like we're sitting here in front of a row of houses built on top of a fault because you can be close to the water that way. So if you think that there might be some lost history, it would probably lie somewhere between here and there. Pretty cool, huh? See my huge uh, grid pattern that I did here. There's this whole area. There's a little pocket of gravel, and I went as far north as we're gonna go. Now we're headed back south. It's getting chilly. Well, I am working on our last spiral of the evening. And we're most of the way back down to where we parked the truck. And it's not a day of fire colors, it's grays and blues and campers. It's still beautiful.
57 We got three dimes and then a bunch of zinc pennies and agates that we found there. These all have cool little inclusions in them. I couldn't help picking up a couple while we were wandering around. You gotta find your treasure, where it is, and what it is. So yeah, pretty simple. Um, I had a good hunt. There was the coin at the end of the day. And I don't know what it is. I'm thinking maybe not Russian now, maybe uh, farther north. You know, maybe Finland or something. I'm not sure. You let me know. And that was kind of cool to find there at the very end. And, yeah, just getting out, enjoying the beach. That's always worth it no matter what. Kind of sparse and kind of sanded in. So we'll have to go back to that location after some storms have chunked it up a little bit. Thank you for joining me on the quest for details and I will see you at the next location. Quest on.